one and i think we're live hi everyone dan here with the designers show on with john schrader and robin fisher how are you guys doing today doing good good welcome to the show and we're gonna talk about some fun tips today uh we could probably spend about a week talking about fun tips things that you can do in chief architect and not just cheap, but just the way you do business in general. So uh, we'll have some fun with that. Anyway, welcome to the show, you guys. Uh, I'm glad you could make it. And if you have any questions, by all means, check them in. John Angel, uh, when I imported PDF, JPEG, how do I scale it for the drawing? Well, that's always a good question. Um, we'll get to that, John. John, how are you doing? How's everything in Chicago? John is a former Bear football player. Oh, really? Oh, really? bears, oh, not bears. Bear. the bears, the bears. The bears. Um, John's like, uh, yeah, John's like, yeah, I heard it before. <laughs> yeah, he's also a very avid fisher angler. Uh, he does contests and things like that. So very cool stuff. And uh, I got to stay with John for a while. It was fun to stay with him and get to know him. So again, welcome everyone. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. But first. Uh, um, what do we got here? 15 people logged in. I oh, actually, I never really know quite how many are logged in, but um, again, thanks for joining us. Do you hear that pounding in the background? That was me. I was adjusting something. No, I don't hear any pounding from you. Oh, no. good. This, I, that's why I'm wearing a little headset today. The guys are working on my roof today, so there's a lot of pounding going on. Um, this, these, this little headset is, is really a cool headset. It doesn't pick up any background noise. And John, you've been using with Patty, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah works great. bike riding and stuff like that. What's yeah. the name of this thing again? I, I don't want to uh, take it off. Aftershock. 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 So yeah. if you, um, this is not a tip. This is not an advertisement because I don't make any money selling this. But um, if you're looking for a really cool headset, um, is it X Shock? Yeah, Shock KZ. Yeah, yeah Aftershock. Aftershocks. And it's the Com. It's, it's the Com one or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bone conducting wireless Bluetooth head, headphone. Um, and uh, I've been using this now for about a year, I think. Not, not maybe that long. Phenomenal headset. And uh, the only reason I bring it up is because I'm using it today versus my boom mic because it doesn't pick up background noise. So, John, you're saying you and Patty can be talking in the same room now? Yeah, much? we can talk in the same room next to each other and the other people don't hear my, me talking to her and you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. So, so it's really we, tiny. We get on the phone on our bikes and ride our bikes and talk to each other while we're riding. Works yeah. great. Oh yeah, that was a really great idea to wear it while you're bike riding. And when you were talking to me the other day, I could barely hear uh, the wind or anything. So right. very nice little thing. Anyway, um, of course I was showing all this and I didn't have my screen up. Let me show that again. I keep doing that. I need a producer that can make sure I have my screen up. Just don't but want to lose it. This like is I it right here. Pardon? You just don't want to lose it like I did. I don't know where mine is. Is that the one that has a boom on it? Oh, uh, I have the one with the boom, yeah. yeah. This, this one doesn't have, this is just a headset, huh? Um, when we got ours at Best Buy, they, were, they weren't by the phones. They were over by the computer stuff. So if you go to the best buy one. That's the one that's $119 is the one that I had purchased earlier and it was great. Yeah, I think that I paid the 160 for mine. All right. So that's not a tip, but it's a tip. So uh if you're looking for a good headset, that's one you want to check out. So it really is a nice unit. All right, you guys. Uh again, uh George, welcome. Thanks for uh, joining us from the UK. Very cool. He has a really um, good question, Dan. Good morning from Alaska. In the UK, most kitchen cabinet man manufacturers offer a free kitchen design service to clients. How do I compete with that? Robin, I'll let you talk about that. Let's not do that right now, though. Let's come back to that one, okay? So don't forget. Um, great question, though, because that's tough when, you know, uh, even lumberyards and stuff will do free plans. And uh, so, yeah, we can certainly talk about that. All right, uh, real quickly before we get into our seven tips of the day, and we're going to try to blast through these as quickly as possible so we can get some other things covered. Um, I just want everybody to be aware that uh, the Kitchen Design Mastery course is still open. Um, 
we had a long discussion about if we should close it down or keep it open and we decided we'll just keep it open for a little while longer um, we've done two two classes already they've been recorded and they're uploaded um, we're having a lot of fun with it so far and we've got a lot of work to do yet so it's really coming along nice and we're uh, there's a ton of information that uh, we're going to be sharing with everybody so if you go to chief experts academy right on the home page you'll you can hit the learn more button and <clears throat> there's a good explanation of what's in all the different courses and um no, they didn't get my uh, NKBA. Um, it's NKBA CEU for 1.8 credits. So that just hasn't been posted on the website yet. So uh, you can just scroll down, read about it. Robin and I are doing the course. John is joining us as a moderator. And uh, so it's really been a lot of fun. And, and uh, we'll be sharing a ton of information. So we're, we're working it out where Robin is doing a class and then I do a class. Robin has a class, I do a class. So we're, we're working it out so that Robin's teaching the theory and, and well, Robin, what are you teaching? You're, you, you say what you're teaching. Really more about how to design a kitchen and increase your bottom line, but make a design really thinking about it from um, storage and functionality standpoint. So it's not the pretty, it's really about how do you deal with the space and um, really analyzing the space very detailed. Yeah, but we'll talk, we'll go way beyond that. We're, we're gonna, we'll be talking business. We'll be talking lots of things. So anyways, it's really kind of, a, there's, there's gonna be a lot of open forum stuff going on too. And then I'm gonna be teaching a lot about, you know, I'm gonna focus on chief architect. So I'll tell you how to take what Robin has taught you and do it in chief architect. So it's 12 sessions, uh, twice a week for six weeks, five more weeks. And then we've got a bunch of bonuses that are coming. So if you're so inclined, check it out. It, it should be, a, uh, it, it is a really great class. So, and again, the, the first two sessions are recorded and uploaded. So there you go. You guys want to add anything to that? Yeah, where can they get the recordings if, once they've signed in and they've... Um... Yeah, once you sign into uh, Chief Experts Academy and you go to, uh, so you go to your sign in, and I think I'm signed in. So you go to my library and in the library will be the different courses and, and other things that you've uh, purchased from us. And you can hit view products and or hit view product for the thing you want to get to. And you'll see them listed right here. So there's number one and number two. And you just click on those and you'll see the video will be right here. You also get a little index right here. And then once you go into that, there's also, we'll have downloads and things like that, that you'll be able to get to. So, and as we, we always post the videos right away and then we go back and edit them and we'll be posting the time codes for all the different topics that we discuss within that session. That takes a, you know, for a few days to a week to get that done. But in the meantime, you can go and watch the video that's up there. You can zip right through it and fast forward to get to the different parts of the video. So, so anyway. Look at me like that, but you know, thanks. <laughs> oh, you look, you look great. Oh, you mean when you move fast like that? Yeah. Don't you move fast like that all the time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So let's. Uh... <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So okay. I see. Edit us a question. All right. So let's get into it with Chief Architect. So um, I've got seven things that I want to talk about, and the first thing I want to talk about is Chief Architect, but it's also just a best practice thing uh, that I like to talk about. If you guys have been around me for a long, uh, you know, some of you have known me for a, quite a while. And whenever we start talking about getting paid for your services, um, that generally leads to a discussion about as built and how you do your as built. And so the first tip I want to offer is do your as built on site. Okay. John, I know you started to do this or um, a number of quite a few years ago, right? And Drawing I think on you, site? Yeah. No, I actually don't. But you did it for a while and then you switched up. Yeah, I switched Are you back. Still, so you switched back to doing it on paper? Yeah. And then drawing it in chief. Are right. you, and, and why did you do that? Um, I just like to concentrate more on the, on the building while I'm there. And I feel like I can do that better if I just take a notes on paper. Okay. And I take a lot of notes. Um, <clears throat> before we got really busy, I'd, I'd send part of my drawing to, to my daughter or, or somebody else that's working with us. And they remember. would start drawing it and then send it back to me. Yeah, I remember when you were doing that. So 
that that worked pretty good to find things that weren't quite working out. Okay. Um, so what have you changed? What have you changed from the way before? You know, you, you did it on you, you did you did as built before, mm -hmm. then you did it on site, and now you're doing not doing it on site again. So what's different from when you did when you did it before you drew it on site? Are you doing anything a little different? I'm I'm using colored pens. I'm getting okay. the uh, what are they called friction. Uh, I forget who makes them, but they're erasable ink pens yeah. mm -hmm. and they're colored. So that works really well. So uh, I take my notes with different colors. So if I'm doing a measurement all the way across the room, I'll do that in one color. If I'm doing a, just a room, I'll do it in another color. Okay. You know, all, or all the way across the building. So that that's helped a lot to decipher what's. I have seen people do that, and that is really really good advice. Yeah. So the, the, so you guys that are measuring on site and then drawing it back at your office, take more time and, and be more careful with your drawings and use the different colors. Um, yeah. So I'll have to dig up some, I have some old drawings somewhere. Um, I don't remember where they are right offhand, but. I also, I also use that foam tag board. Um, just make it, make it like, I use 11 by 17 paper and I put a graph on it that I printed in chief. Okay. Um, and I put, uh, I have a thing off to the side for notes and stuff like that. So sometimes I'll just write A and then put a note there and then put A on my, my uh, plan as I'm drawing it. You know, okay. so kind of like a note thing. And I assume um, you take a ton of pictures. Ton of pictures. Do video. Yeah. So, so um, I'm a proponent of whatever works for your business. What works for me in my business is to draw it on site with Chief Architect. I um have done way too many draw you know I, i've tried drawing it on site on paper and then i go back to my office and i always always forget stuff um or i can't read my writing one or the other um or i get enough dimensions and then i miss a dimension and it just like drives me nuts so then i end up spending more time and then i again i'm talking about me um and then i end up spending uh, i have uh, doubts in my plan because i think it might be wrong uh, so I like to draw, I like to take my laptop and draw it on site. In fact, that's, you know, I've been doing that for years. In fact, before chief, I used to take a mini, a small drawing board that would fit, um, 18 by 24 paper. And I would draw to scale on site. And that's actually not a bad idea either. Um, at least get it somewhat to scale or at least use graph paper. Um, I know a contractor that draws everything on a quarter and scale on a graph paper. So that works pretty well too. Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever you can do, to, whatever you do to measure a building, do it well. Take the time you need to measure that building accurately so that you're confident in the plan that you have. So one of the, um, one of the things I wanna offer here is to get this little stand called, um, where'd it go here? Come on. It's called the. I'm gonna get rid of Amy here. There she is. Um, it's called the uh, laptop tripod. Get the ultra with the large table, and get a carrying bag with it too. It cost you a couple three hundred dollars, I think. Actually, it was like a hundred and it's one hundred and fifty for the table and the stand and the bags. Or I don't even. You'd have to look at the pricing again, but um, they they nip you on the shipping. Just be aware of that. So then I think they, uh, the shipping is a lot, but anyway, it's, it's, once you own it, it's, it's a really sturdy, wonderful, uh, device that you can take out to the job site, set your laptop on it, just move it from room to room. In fact, if you know, you might even take it, if you're not even measuring on site, just take it to use it for a drawing table when you're, you know, uh, laying out your notes and things like that. So that's, you know, a good as built's worth its weight in gold. Um, for a remodeling project, especially if you're doing anything uh, large in a house. So I'd really recommend that. Now, the next thing I'd like to recommend about as built is try some of the apps. Um, and if you guys are using the apps out here, let, let me know. I'd love to understand or love to hear what, what's working for you for as built. Um, there's one called Canvas that is pretty promising, and they will produce a chief architect uh file that you can use uh with chief 
again, I'm I kind of like to always preface, you'll use the app to get your project started, get your drawing, get the get it sold. Once you sell it, then go back and verify all the dimensions before you can create complete working drawings from it. I don't know. There's just I've heard really good things about this. Um, I think it's going to be as good as your scan is. Uh, you, you, I believe it's only for um, Apple right now, iPads or iPhones. They don't have an Android version. You need a, a newer Apple device with the LiDAR technology, it's called. Uh, but I, I, we had these guys on an interview last spring and, and really cool technology. And I think they've come a long way with it in a year. And it's worth checking out. And it's very affordable to do your as built. So if you're just doing a few rooms, like a kitchen and a hall or something like that, it's not going to cost you very much to get those scans and get those 3D drawings or the drawings for that. And then you're well on your way to get this project going in a real quick way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I tried it on my house and it was pretty, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. And uh, I would do it if I were out measuring jobs all day long for kitchens and things like that, I would use this technology for that. If nothing else, I'd use it at least to get the scans. So I've got the three, the scans like this. So you come back with a picture that you can walk around and move around in, just like they're showing here on the screen. It's pretty cool. And it, it, again, it's worth checking out. So you guys should do that. All right, you guys been watching questions. Anybody say anything about that? Well, a lot of people, are, there's a few people using Matterport, and we've heard a lot of really good things about it. And our understanding is, is that the yeah. price on Matterport has gone down a lot. So Matterport, uh, Matterport's they, phenomenal, but they don't produce a chief drawing. Or maybe they do. Yeah, they someone, do. They, some, that's right. That was you, John, that said yeah. they do. Okay. Yeah. So um, that technology, their cameras are really, really good. You're buying a dedicated 3D camera, but they do have it so you can do it on your phone now too. Right. Um, I did that on my phone. The thing with, with Matterport on your phone, you have to keep the phone steady and just kind of turn turn around. You turn around the phone instead of you turning the phone around you. Okay. So what I did is I got a tripod with a, so I can mount my phone in that, and that seemed to work really well. Okay. Nice. I mean, if I were doing a lot of as-built, I'd, I'd probably just get the Matterport camera and just do that because that's going to be really, really accurate and really yeah. good. You do have some yeah. limitations with the phone, too. There's some things they can't do with the phone app. Yeah. So. so anyway, something worth taking a look at, you guys. Thought I'd show that. All right, let's get back to Chief now. So, and, and again, I'd love your comments and feedback on that. If, you, uh, if you've had good success with any of those apps, please drop me a line, drop me an email. And I'd love to talk to you about that. So let's talk about, um, so those are my as built suggestions. And again, one thing about the, as, go over to my web, and this, this kind of goes hand in hand. Um, this whole as built thing is part of a whole design package. And if you haven't done so already, go to the homepage at Chief Experts Academy and scroll down and download the, well, there's two downloads here. Um, get the 15 reasons you can and should charge more for your plans. And I, I believe I talk about as built in that. And I want to uh, clarify something though, Dan. Let me just clarify. If yeah. even if you're using something like um Canvas or Matterport, I'm I'm going to assume you should, still should take some basic dimensions just to be able to confirm. Mm -hmm. But if you are site measuring and site drawing, you know, like you're bringing your computer and you're putting it up on a laptop and drawing it on on site, which I do agree with, I still believe that you should have a paper backup because the drawing can move. You know, I wish I wish that Chief had it set up to where you could lock the walls. You know, can. so you can't move okay. them. Can you can. lock the walls so they yes. don't? Put them on a layer, lock the layer. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, it's you can do that with anything. Classes every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can lock anything you want, Chief, if you want okay. to. Anyway, so check it out. Uh, get the, the two downloads here. Um, if you're not, this is there's some really good information here about getting paid for your design services. Anyway, let's move on. We don't we're, we don't have a ton of time here today. So as um, I want to talk about options next. Okay, um, what I mean by option is how do you draw different ideas in your plan? So typically what I see most people doing 
is they're going to be drawing. What is this thing here? They're, they're, you're going to be starting a layout of something. Okay, so I'm going to show you two different ways to do options and show them on your plan and keep them somewhat organized. The goal, I always teach the goal is to try to keep everything in one plan if you can. Um, and you can even do that with options. You know, some of you may have may have seen me do this before, but I'm going to show you again. So here's a kitchen that we're, we're doing on a project, okay? Nothing fancy, just a little addition here. But maybe you want to show the, the owner some different ideas. So you could do it one of two ways. Um, you could create separate files for each one, or you could create separate floors to show different options. So what do I mean by that? Well, here's option. Let's do it by floor. Okay. So if you do options by floor, the idea is that you create a new blank floor and this copy and paste the plans and then change them. Um, this works great if you have a one level plan, you're not doing a roof or anything like that. Um, as soon as you throw a roof on this, this idea doesn't work anymore. Okay. But if, it's, if you're just doing a room, a kitchen, a bathroom, or a whole main level or something like that, and you want to show different options, so let's, uh, let's just do it by floor. So here I've done it. Floor one is one option. Floor two is an option. Floor three is an option. Okay, so I've just switched it up to different ways. How did I do that? Um, let's go do floor four as an option. So what you would do, again, it's good for one level plans. You go into your floor tools right here and you build a new floor, all right? And then you're gonna make it a blank floor. And then you click okay. And then, you know, set your parameters so it matches the other floor and then click okay. Now you have a blank floor. And we're gonna go down here, we're gonna group select everything and hit copy. Then we're gonna go up to the blank floor and we're gonna paste and hold position. We'll put it right in the same exact spot. Now you're good to go. So now you can start moving things around, making different changes, doing different ideas. Uh, you know, you want to put the refrigerator over there. So you could do whatever you want to with this floor because it's now a separate plan. All right. Now here's the trick to making this work. Okay. So now I can scroll through each floor. Everything stays lined up because I use paste and hold position. Um, but when I bring up a 3D view of the overview here, and I look at it like this. this, I mean, this looks great, but now when I start climbing the floors, okay, so I go to floor floor two, floor three, floor four, okay, so now they're all stacked on top of each other, okay, so now you're getting a high rise. Well, we don't want that, although that'd make a nice little apartment building, right? Um, so we don't want that. So what you have to do in order to um, overcome that is... What you have to do to overcome that is go to um, your uh, default settings. Again, we're using that yellow camera right here. Okay, so we got to go find that under the camera tools. And so we're going to go to default settings. Okay, so again, we're going to hit the default icon. I'm using the extended toolbar. That's why I have more icons. And we're going to look for the um, perspective floor overview camera. Okay. <coughs> That's that. That's what that is. And you're going to open that and edit it. And you're going to go to the very bottom here and you're going to uncheck this show lower floors in floor overviews. So what that means is as you scroll up to the different floors, this is only affecting this plan, no other plans. So now as I roll up, now I'm just getting those floors. I'm not getting them all stacked up on top of each other. So now you can scroll through the 3D views and scroll down apparently i lost a wall there and now you can look at the different options doing it that way that's great. and that's a real simple way to show different options for a plan now let me show you another tip all right so go back to the traditional way of doing options all right so we we take a plan and we uh save as do a save that yeah make a copy of it and we, oh, I got the wrong one open here. <clears throat> okay, so here's option one, option two, option three. So we have different plans, separate, whole separate files for each option. 
okay, which is real typical. I mean, if you have to, you know, th these plans have basements, they have roofs on them. So it's, it's a full blown model that, and it's got a roof on it. And if you have a roof on your plan, you can't put another floor above that because the roof will cut all the walls off or the floors above. So you can't do that. So you have to have separate plans for this. And that's cool. So go ahead and create your separate options. But let's let me show you how to quickly add these different options to the layout page. OK, so here's a little tip for you. Some of you may already know this. So I'm going to open a new layout page and and we'll switch. We'll just go over to the. Um, oh, I opened a new plan, didn't I? Not a layout page, new layout. And I'm going to switch that to my 18 by 24. I'll go 24 by 36. All right, so there we go. So let's go ahead and throw option number one on the layout, okay? And I'm just going to hit send to layout. So right now I've got, you know, let me just make that a, a smaller scale so I can get all of these on one page. You can do it on separate pages if you want to, but I'm just going to put it on one page. So here's how you do this. It's really simple. So let's get that first view. So I want to show all the different options here. So I'll show the three different separate files, and I'll also show the three floors all at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. Um, actually, let's do it like this. Let's copy. And I'm just going to make two more copies. And let me pull those over like that. Yeah, it would overlap just a bit. Not going to worry about it. Then I'm going to select those again. Copy. Again, I could be copying and putting this on a different sheet or whatever. All right. So, so now I've got six different viewports. Okay. These are these would be the three separate plans. These would be the three separate floors or four floors if I, I'd have to add another view. So all you have to do to show the different options here. Okay. So right now they all say option one, option one, option one. So click on a viewport and click on the little link down here, the little icon that looks like a link, okay? And what that will do, huh, I didn't know you could do that, unlink, save, plan, view, okay. So what, what I'm gonna do then is for that viewport, I want to show option two. Again, these are separate files now. So we click okay, and now I've got option two showing there, different layout. Then I'm gonna click on this one, hit the little link icon, I'll show option three in that viewport. All right, there we go. So now I've, I've just put all of those three different options right here. Let's do the ones by floor, okay? First, I have to link this view port to the plan that is by the floor, option by floor, okay? So that was a whole separate plan, but it has, you know, the different floors on it. So there's option one by floor. Then I go over here and I click on this, and now I'm not going to use the link now. I'm going to use the open dialog. So in the open dialog, I'm going to go link the save plan view. That's fine. And what do I want to show in this one? Okay, why is it not showing my extra floors? Did I goof up here? Oh. Oh, you know what? Yeah, those that's still linked to the old one. Let's do this. Let me copy from the one that has the right it's linked to the same plan. Those are still linked to the that was still linked to the other plan. So now I hit the open door open dialog. Now I want to show the second floor in that viewport. And in this one, I want to show the third floor in that viewport. And then again, I could keep going if I have more floors. So these are all one plan. These are all part of one single plan. These are all separate files. And that's just a really easy way to display them on the layout. So if you, then, if you look at the reference plan file now, it's, it's referencing all three of those plans. Mm-hmm. You're talking about the, the link save, the if, plan view? If you put you... up the reference uh, the reference plan files, the tool that you can put on the layout there to see what plans are referenced in that layout. Um, go up to tools. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. Okay, had me, had me thinking there for a second. What are you talking about? Okay, so under tools, you, you go to layout, in reference plan files, remember each viewport that you put on layout page is linked to something. And this will show you what it's all linked to. So if I go, as John was saying, go to link, layout, referenced, um, 
reference plan files, there's the four different plans, option yeah. one, two, three, and then by floor. Those are in those different viewports that I've created. So these, these three viewports right here are this plan right here. This one is that, this one is that, and this one is that. There you go. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Hey, you got it. Yeah, that's a fun little tip. I use that one all the time when I'm doing different um, different layouts for a simple plan. But again, if you got to do, and the nice thing about this also, now you've got a, a page. All you have to do is double click on any one of these to open to that particular mm -hmm. view. Yep. So this becomes like a file management page as a, in, in a sense. So any yeah. layout can do that. A catalog, exactly. Um, so Dan, all right. yes. you should show that every single time you're on the screen. I'll bet you so many people kind of got, okay, I get it, but I don't get it. <laughs> that's brilliant. I mean, yeah. Oh my, yeah. that's, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. That's why you're the master. Yeah. Uh, well, we keep trying. We want to make this fun for everybody. All right. So that actually was kind of three tips in one. All right. Well, two, I guess, options in the layout thing. So, so you got a whole bunch of tips in, in two things. All right. So let me show you another thing. So when you're starting a plan, all right, and I do this all the time. I'm just going to close all these down. I don't need these right now. And I'm just going to start a new plan. And let me go file new. Any comments here that um, people have been making? Game changer. This is brilliant. <laughs> All right. We like brilliant. Thank um, you. People you are in it. awe right now. So I think they're just, you know, like, who knew? Who knew? Well, one, yeah, again, that's just part of understanding. Oh, nice fish, Norman. Um, yes. Once you understand, and, and I edit. Um, thanks for that comment. Um, uh, it's just once you understand the linking of layouts and plans and how they all go together, it, it yeah, it's really simple. It, it's really, it starts to make sense. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so let me go here and let's just draw out some walls. Oh. Don't, don't get excited to work. All right. So a lot of times when I work on a, a plan and I'm working on a kitchen, or something like that. Uh, I, uh, if I'm going to work on a kitchen, the first thing I want to do is kind of get the traffic flow, the space planning correct. All right, I don't want to necessarily uh, um, <clears throat> throw a bunch of cabinets into my plan. So here's what I'd like to do. I use countertops to lay out a kitchen. So I'm going to go custom countertops. There's two ways to do this. Um, one, I could just use the countertop and start laying it out. And now this is where you need to understand a few of the edit tools on the edit toolbar to reshape this custom countertop. And then I could bring up a 3D view and I could grab this and tile my display so I can watch what's changing. Now, let me let me just do one thing first. Let me, let me educate you quickly on a couple of the tools. Some of you already know all this stuff, but I'll say it again. So the first thing we have to do is know how to reshape a CAD box, which is what a countertop is. It's a polyline box. So we're going to use tools such as the break tool. We'll maybe use the, um, not that tool, the alignment tool. We're going to use some point to point. Uh, you know, you might change line to an arc. So here's how we do a few of these things. So the first thing you'll always want is the break tool. That's this tool right here. And you notice when I put my cursor on it, it says add a break. And the number three key is the keystroke for that. So if you're not using your three key to break things, you should. So let's click the number three key and I'll put a break in there. And then I'm just going to go, I want this to be 25. And I want this to be 25. And so now you could just keep changing the shape of this to, you know, play with different ideas. You know, I want this to be six feet of space in here. So it's really easy to do this space planning in a room. You know, how often have you laid out an island and you don't know if the island can fit, so you resize cabinets and you do all of this stuff only to find out that you just wasted your time messing with a bunch of cabinets, all right? So if I wanted to create a, a, a island here, I could now do it. I could add my dimensions here really easily. 
just click here, you know, add a dimension. You know, I must have my countertop dimensions turned off. That's right, that was something I needed to fix in Chief. So let me go to my defaults here. Actually, let me just double click on the ruler icon and go to um, locate manual and countertops. Where'd they go? They're underneath um, cabinets. Uh, yep, there it is. Okay. So I had that shut off for some reason. And all right, why are you still not doing it? There we go. Good enough. Okay. So now I can, you know, say, well, I want a minimum of 42 inches here. I want a minimum of you know, 40, you know, 42 inches here or whatever the number is you like to work with. All right. So now I could, now I know where those spots are. I can start messing with my island and try different ideas and different shapes and, um, you know, if I, you know, I know I want to have a 36 inch island. And so, so you can easily do your space planning. Now, if you want to even take it a step further, just make your countertops 36 inches thick and it'll look more like a cabinet. Oops, except don't change. Make sure you keep the top of the cabinet the same place. I do this once in a while just to demonstrate to the client. Uh, but generally, I don't do this. I just work with the countertops because it gives me an idea of the space I have to work with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so using the CAD boxes, they're easy to work with, easy to configure. And if you get a space worked out just the way you want it with the countertops, uh, you know, you're good to go. Just start putting cabinets under the countertops. And because you've got the countertops in place, Chief will automatically remove the uh, the the uh, countertops from the cabinets you put underneath the countertop. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. All right. No one liked that. No one thought that was brilliant, though. Dang. <laughs> That's all right. It's a fast way of doing it. It's faster than going and selecting cabinets. Um, it's, it's definitely faster than selecting cabinets. If you're trying yeah. to just throw a bunch of quick ideas, it's very yeah. similar. And, and when you're and when you're yeah, and we're sitting there staring at the screen, um, and I want to concentrate on the space itself. This is a really simple way to. And, and again, another way to duplicate this is just you know copy this and pull it over here. Okay, now you could work on option two. So nobody says you can't put them all in the same floor plan too. Um, so I do this, I'll, I'll, I do this a fair amount too, where I'm just, you know, until I like to zero in more on a shape that I like, and then I'll just use that. And so this is another way to create those copies. Just highlight everything, hit the copy button, drag the copy off. And another way to do those different ideas. All right. Um, you know, practical, straightforward space planning layout tips. That was it. I mean, it's just, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of other tools that I use to lay out um, different ideas for rooms. A lot of them have to do with CAD boxes. Um, I created a little, um, little catalog of, uh, where did I put them? Room layout boxes, I call them. It's just a bunch of colored, CAD boxes. So when I'm working on a larger project, and I've kind of got this working with on a really big house, this idea came up. It's just use colored boxes for the different kinds of rooms. It's it's similar to Chief's um, space planning tools that they have, mm -hmm. and you know, and those things work pretty well if you you know like if you can do everything in rectangles. Uh, CAD boxes allow you to change. CAD boxes allow you to um, change the shape. So I, I just pasted all these boxes here. Let me ungroup them, and then I would just start dragging these boxes around onto my plan about where I want to put these types of items. So if I'm going to have a bath, I know I'm going to have this over here. And so it just helps. Just another way to, for me to visualize where the spaces are going to be. So it's kind of that's a that's just that process you go through. It's it's similar to the bailiwick where you just take your bailiwick and you draw circles on it where you want this 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 and this. You know it's just a, a different way of of doing this. It's bubble diagram on CAD. Pretty much, pretty yep. much. So 
So that's uh, another way I like to do that. All right. So Robin, um, you were going to talk a little bit about schedules. Yeah. Can I just click and share my screen? I can. You Look can, I, but I have to bring you up. Um, so, we'll... so schedules, if you guys aren't using you, schedules. You... Oh, there we go. So if you guys are not using schedules, this is like, this has became my game changer. Um, I really love adding schedules to my plans and being really detailed with them. So I uh, make sure that you're, your cat your schedules are all up in your cad details you want to make sure that they're not on your plans because what i have done is i start creating custom schedules and then i can save them in my template so once i've created a custom schedule it's saved to my template and then i am it automatically populates do you save when those I start those, design. do you save those in the cad detail window or do you save them on the floor plan where do you no, save them in your template the CAD detail window and so they're have listed a, as so you schedules. Show people what a CAD detail window looks like. So it's right here. And if you see the little house um, up at the top, I, I'm not so, I'm sorry, I'm not really good um, manipulating the screen, but you can see how this little house looks like here. That is, um, it's a CAD, it's a CAD yeah, detail. It, it's under the, it's under the pulled on, it's under pulled on menu CAD and right it's here. called CAD detail management. Right here. Yep. Oh yeah, so it's under this. And you can go into your um, CAD detail management right here and you can actually create one. Um, or you can create it here. You can go to your project browser and just right click and say new CAD detail. That's where I do. I don't yep. use the drop down screens. I come right into my project browser. Um, but then I create my schedules. And I'm not sure how many schedules I have for this specific project. I have some notes, which is where I put my finishes, um, tile details, um, countertops, cabinet finishes, all that kind of stuff happens here. And then I create um, custom schedules for my cabinet accessories, what's happening in every one of my cabinets. My electrical schedules are very detailed. I'm pretty picky about my lighting. And then um, my plant schedules, I've separated out my plant schedule from my fixed, you know. So one of the things that I learned, and honestly, I just learned this. It blew my mind that I just now saw this, is that when you are creating schedules, you can actually break your schedules down really detailed in X13. So if you're using X13, you can actually, let me just put a new schedule in here. You can actually say, um, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to delete that one and put in a fixture schedule. So the fixture schedule will include, I'm sorry, let me move this out of the way. So it's in a spot where you can see it. I separate out Fixtures, if you guys are not aware of this in, in what Chief has done now, is fixtures used to, before X13, would put everything, plumbing and appliances, all into one schedule. Well, your appliance person doesn't need your plumbing information and vice versa. And neither, you know, your um, cabinet person, your electrician, your plumber, or your cabinet electrician at, um, needs the appliance information, right? Um, panels. They need to know where the circuits go, but your elect your plumber might ne not necessarily need it. They do on some appliances. Let's be real about that. But I separate out my my fixtures. I didn't realize until just recently that you can actually come in here and change your fixtures to just include just the apl the plumbing and I can take HVAC off. I can take indoor. So if I'm doing an outdoor kitchen, I could just put my outdoor plumbing fixtures in there. So now I have divided, I have changed this fixture to just this schedule to just be my plumbing schedule, which I had no idea. I mean, this is crazy that you can get that information. Um, the other thing that I do is I go through and I can itemize what I specifically need here. <clears throat> so a lot of the plumbing fixtures I use are not in chief, right? They're not like I use Groff or I use uh, Waterworks, Waterstone. Those products are not a symbol that's in chief. So I will use whatever symbol is close enough and put it in here. So I can't use the finish information that's in this section. So I will go through and add custom labels to my thing, to my columns. So for example, if I go, I'm just going to stay here and select a faucet. So I'm just going to select, 
um, this is a Brizo fixture, but I'm just going to open this object up. And let's say that it is a Waterworks product. It's not Brizo. So I can change this and say this is Waterworks. And I can come down here to custom object fields and I can add my, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not using the right screen. I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> to two different screens at the same time. So I opened up that one fixture, which was a Brizo, but I'm going to change it to Waterworks because Waterworks is not a product that has a catalog for Chief. So I want to add some information. So what I did, I'm going to cancel that and go here. I want to add finishes. So I can click on this create new field and I can type in finishes, finish, and so, select. So um, real quick, how many of you people are using schedules in chief? I'd be cur curious to know if you could just give us a um, note if you're using schedules for your projects. Because schedule tools in chief have gotten phenomenal. I mean, they're really, really good. In cr crazy. I love these things. So I can add this kind of information, right, into my schedule, and then I can modify it here. I can actually then modify, I can open up my schedule, and then I can add that finishes to here. There's some of these I don't use, right? So I, you, you're going to modify all this the way you want to modify what information is in here and not. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you'll modify and figure out what how you want your schedule to look. But now my finish is right here for this company. And I can go through all of these products and add a line for my finishes. The best part that I do afterwards is my schedules are on my plans, but then I also copy the schedules to a, um, wor a word file, a, doc a, a document file. And that way I give that to my contractor. So my contractor has it on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, which is easier for them to order products. So mm -hmm. I give them um, the best part about this is um, the information is there. So, I mean, I don't know about you. I hate writing specs. It's like my least favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. So as I'm creating my construction documents, and we start selecting product, I open up that object and start putting the information in there. Yeah, so, John, you just discovered this, that you can, any symbol can be on a schedule, on any right. schedule, right? Yep. So, so yeah, so as long as it's a symbol, the one thing you can't add to schedules right now are slabs. So if you go on the in an elevation and draw, you know, trim on the gable end or something like that using chief slab tools, you'd have to convert that to a schedule, uh, to a symbol first in order to have it on a schedule. You can't uh, with slabs though. You can make a material, and it will show up on your material list. Yeah, but that's not a schedule. No, so right. but you you're right. Use, yeah, I and I use notes for those kind of things like paint finishes and yeah. um, custom moldings and things like that. I use those type of items for it. Cool. It's fabulous. It, so, it's just changed my life. Schedules have. So what's the last my life. thing you do? What's the last thing you do, Robin, when you get that? all set up like that um then i put it onto my plan right and so then you put it, you put it, onto you, my put it in your you put that symbol in your library that you changed that stuff to oh. put the manufacturer's name and model number on it and now it's ready for next time oh that's pretty smart you're pretty smart you're a smart guy okay yeah i do that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. John, John's actually, wife keeps telling him that, but he never believes her. So, um, <laughs> so John actually can show how to do that. If I created that um, item, let me well, do that. How would you? How do you make that into a schedule? Just go so click on it where it's in the plan. Okay, so open it you up. You can do that. You can do that from the schedule or too. from there even. Yeah. Okay, and then you, you don't put I it in the schedule. You're just going to put it in your library. You're going to okay, make it a library okay. item for your user so library. That, Oh, so then all I do is once I select it on my plan, then I go down to the bottom screen where the symbol is and add so, that to the library. So cancel, close that window, Robin. Okay. And on the bottom toolbar, you see next to the open door, no, not, I'm sorry, on oh. the right side of your edit tools, there's a little uh -huh. magnifying glass. So go back, right. go back to your schedule. Got it. I did that. Yeah. And then find that item. highlight that item. Now click the little magnifying glass. Right here. 
that find it says object find object and plan. Bam. Now, now you've selected. selected. Now click yeah. a little. Now click. Uh, uh, the we just have. Books plus. You don't have to. It is already a symbol. So now you just add it to the library. Yep. You can add it to the library. Not and anymore. now it is, and I can call it a waterworks fixture. Yep. Yeah. Put the model number on there for it. And then all your stuff will be set for next time. Cool. All right. That's John, you were going to cool. talk a little bit about moldings. The, okay. We didn't answer that question about uh, what to do if you're up against lumber yards or cabinet makers. Uh, let's do your moldings and we're going to come to the, and we're going to add, answer okay. two questions. We'll probably go over a little bit here today. All right. Um, but and we want to talk about moldings first. All right. So well, what do you and, want me to talk about? Moldings go ahead and about? show your, show people how to do molding and how to group, how to you know, that. how to group them together. You know how to create a multiple molding. Yeah, you have two or three things, and you can create it into a one new molding. Yeah. So you got to share, uh, share screen. screen. Is it going to ask me which screen to share? Yes. That should. Yep. Yeah. Right there. Share screen. You there see you my go. chief? Yep. There you go. Okay. All right. To do a multiple molding. If you like to make a new molding, is that what you're wanting, or what? Well, if you add two or more things to the same molding. I just polyline. go on my click on my room here and I come down here and make a room molding polyline. Yep. And say, okay. And then I open that up and let's say I want to do a multiple chair rail or something. Um, go to moldings, add a new molding. We'll go to chair rail, minimize that, go to chair rail and maybe pick that one for a top. Say, okay. And I'm going to use this one for my bottom because it's just a board. Um, so I'm going to make this three quarters of an inch thick and three and a half inches tall. And I'm going to offset this one vertically by three and a half inches. Yeah, it takes, should, sometimes oh, it takes a while to get yeah. used to those offsets and things like that. But yeah, yeah, eventually. So it, it looks like I should have gone minus three and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> I always type the wrong number. Put it back to zero and then minus 3.5. It's probably still not going to be quite right. No, it did work. Yeah, that's okay. pretty close. Yeah, the cool thing is you can see it. Right, we can you know, see it happening. Take, we don't have to close the window to look at it. If this is going where it was to go on the outside of the building, you want to uncheck this button right here, extrude to inside a polyline, because yeah. you want it to face out and not in. So I'll just say OK. And grab a camera so we can go see it. So there it is. You'll see because it's a chair rail, it cut around all the do doors and windows. Um, I did was messing with this earlier, and if you put it in beforehand, it doesn't necessarily cut the window out. Right. It, yeah, because the so window. If that were the case, place. let's put another window in here and see if it still does it. No, it did cut it out. No, it is. so chief is. Uh, wow, that's pretty cool. Yep. Chief added some functionality there to do that. Never used to do that. You always, we always had to go break it and then mark that point as, an, as turned off. So I did do another one too. It's not about kitchens, but I'll just let me show this quick. Because sometimes you'll do a gable, you'll do a exterior and your freeze board won't show up. Mm -hmm. You can make a molding like this with a 3D molding polyline. Same concept. Where Same you're concept. Just, you're just, just doing it on the there. elevation. Yep. Any molding line in chief is simply a CAD line that's programmed to extrude whatever profile you, you assign to it. So that's what, you know, things like gutters and, and ridges and uh, freeze boards, all those things chief adds automatically. They're all added to a molding polyline. It's pretty cool how they do that. Yeah. And then John, how do you convert that to a, uh, you know, you've just created that one where you've got two pieces together and you want to save that in your library. So if you I would. Um, click on that, I think you do have to open the dialog for it. And then you can. Where do I get that from? Where, where do I make it so I can see this? Do I have to do a do I have to do an elevation camera or? I don't know. <laughs> Let's open you new. Well, OK, so the way I would do it, the way I would do it would be to um, get in a get in my elevation camera, take an elevation of it get zoomed in on it so there it is oh it's not showing what's going on here i'm in the wrong plan uh, 
take it try it one more time if that doesn't work i'll just show you with what we got here okay so there's our there's my molding right I probably should do a back clip cross section so i don't get the other wall okay all you have to do john uh, okay go go open that molding profile um, that you just created the multiple the two pieces so this is where say if you create a molding profile then you stacked a bunch of things together uh -huh. Click add the library right there above that picture. Ah, uh, bam. No, it you didn't just, get everything though. It only didn't. got the, no, you have to select, the, you, you select. Can you, can we group like select? It. I'll select this. Can yeah. we group yes. select so those things? And then no, hit, I only okay. got the one. <laughs> All right. So that's more. okay. Oh, no, I, no, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. Select make stack. Stop. Now that you make selected it, make stack. Yeah, that's what On the right hand side, see make that they stack. Yes. And, and now add to library. Add library. Yes. There you go. We figured it out. What's ah, what a team. Yeah. Way to go, team. And now, now that you see it, that it made the stack, it's, it looks like I had needed to offset that another eighth of an inch, inch and a sixteenth of an inch. But to get here's the best part out. about it is if you do like a craftsman style molding where you have, what is it? You know, you're doing a lint, you know, the hitter over a window and you have the, uh, the parting bead, and then you have the fascia board, and then you have the crown molding on it. You can actually just save it as one item, and then you can modify the um, the fascia board. So, like, you can make right. the fascia board taller right. if you're yeah. doing a kitchen, you know, a house yep. that has a taller fascia board. But it's done, and you don't have to recreate it. It's the coolest thing. That was an X12 thing, and I do love it. Yeah. Okay. Moving on yeah. here. We're almost wait, out of wait, time. Wait, wait. Let me show this quick. Oh, oh. Okay. All right. Together we so are if you want to make your own molding, just put a bunch of shapes together and then highlight them and then click on your uh, union, polyline union down here. No, I don't want to retain the original. And then I can just come down here and go to library. And it puts it in as a molding. And I just changed the name of it to what I want it to be. Right. So make it. the make union is kind of think of it as making an outline of the, uh, of the items you've selected. Yep. All right. Cool. That that and that works really well too um, for creating your own molding polylines. So let's yeah. move on here now. Uh, let's go and, and talk for. We've got a couple things I want to cover. We're going to run over a little bit here. Um, so if you guys have to go, that's fine. Um, but we have a great question here from George. Um, most cabinet manufacturers offer free kitchen design service to clients. How do I compete with that? Robin, you want to address that? Yeah. So. You know, the biggest issue is what a lot of companies are going to do is then they own the plans. So, you know, they won't give them to you or they'll give you a 3D representation, but they're not going to give you the construction documents. So there's a few things that you want to chat about it is, is one is they're not doing full construction documents. They're only doing the cabinet plans um, and you can't take it someplace else. So you have to buy the cab. Most places will say, you have to buy my cabinets from me before I give you the dimension drawings. I'll give you a 3D, but I'm not going to give you the real thing. So that's one thing. Um, the argument, the other argument is, is there only these people, cabinet shops are only dealing with the cabinets. So they might be dealing with the cabinets and the countertops and maybe the hardware, but they're not dealing with tile backsplash and the lighting plan and any of the construction details right. like window change and flooring and all that other thing. <clears throat> it's, so you know, it's no different than going to the big box store and, and they're going to lay out some cabinets for you in, in the operator behind the computer screen. Are they, you know, how, what's their knowledge of kitchen design of finding out what the client's needs are of asking the right questions of, you know, going and look at the house and, and make sure everything works. I mean, if all they're doing, all you're doing is replacing some cabinets um, in, a, in a room, um, you know, then you've got to, you've got to figure out the other services you offer um, and sell those as well as that, you know, y your expertise in designing kitchens is going to far surpass people in the, that just design sure. layout cabinets. Does that help you? Because I know there are certain cabinet shops in the UK, like you guys have some pretty amazing cabinet shops where they're also design build. Like you have Duval Kitchens, you have Smallbone, you have, you know, you have some amazing cabinet shops there. 
do they do the design, the construction documents? I mean, are you fighting against that level? There's you guys, there are cabinet shops in, in the UK that, I mean, I would drool over having the opportunity to work with. We can't afford to get them here. They're so crazy expensive. But yeah. um, is that does that help you? Is to argue the to argue the point of you're taking the product, <clears throat> you're, taking the, the, you're doing the rest of the construction documents. Does yeah. that help you? Because um, we're short on time, I'm going to say go to my homepage and download the "You Deserve to Be Paid for Your Design Services." Um, li understand the products you offer and sell then the expertise that you have that cabinet shops don't have, um, learn how to become a better salesperson. Um, it's simple to go to YouTube and, and look up Tom Hopkins uh, and how to sell. Um, he'll teach you how to learn how to become a really good question asker. And, and there's lots of other people out there too that are really good at helping you become a professional sales person and, and really a good designer slash good salesperson is nothing but a really good question asker and a good listener and a good a person that can get that you know relay that information back to the client in the form of a plan that they'll go wow i gotta have that um and here how much money how much money do you want um yeah right we could wish right <laughs> um so so you so that's part of the process of doing all of this so um, at least I, I remember back in the day when I was in construction and I, I was had a hard time offering my services at the prices that I needed to offer them. I, I took sales classes. I learned how to become a good salesperson. And in that process, I learned how to become a good question asker. So and for whatever that's worth. Um, real quick. Um, so, uh, but great question. So feel free to carry on this conversation with us via email if you want to. Uh, we had a question about working on textures. How do I go material draw dialogue directly? Use the rainbow tool, okay? This little tool right here, when you want to get directly to a yeah, material. Stream. Oh. Stream. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Add to stream, there we go. Can you, can you take the, there you go. There we go. So you want to use this icon right here. And you just click on the material you want to work on. And I'll go to this flooring. And it'll take you directly to the material, define material dialog. And in X13, you can also make a copy of that material and add it directly to your library from this dialog. You never used to be able to do this until X13. So now I can add this material to my library and then I can make changes to it. Okay, I can change the direction, I could change the color, I could change the pattern but still use the same base material. So that little button right there is, is huge. Saves It saves a f f dozen clicks, just like, geez. Um, anyway, all right. Uh, John had a question early on. Uh, John Angel, how do you scale a drawing? Okay, I'll show you two ways really quick. And then uh, you guys look, see if there's any other questions that we need to hit um, and we'll cover those. John wants to also know how, how John uh, drew that beautiful staircase behind him. Didn't draw it, just built it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of tough to draw in chief. You just draw it by hand. You put it, you, you get it, get the top and bottom rail drawn, and then you draw the spindles in by hand. Yeah. 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 Or on a bad day, chief might just be corrupt and draw that way anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> you might be able to do anyway. something with SketchUp. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, here's, here's a way to scale, two different ways to scale a, a drawing. If you have a drawing and have one dimension on it, all right, so I just made a copy of this floor plan. It's just a picture, all right? Could be a JPEG, could be a, a PDF. Um, you got it. When you click on that image, you've got this little icon down here, okay? That icon will allow you to scale something. So we're going to click on that, and we're going to go find two dimensions. So you want to find the longest dimension you can. So I'm going to go to that 240 inches. I'm going to put my crosshair right in the middle of that, and right in the middle of that. And I'm going to say retain the aspect ratio. You want to make sure that that stays checked. And we're just going to type in the dimension you want this to be. And bam, it'll, re it'll scale that picture to full size. And now you can uh, put it on a layer, lock it in place, trace over it. Turn it on and off whenever you want to. Wow. All right. The next item is a little trickier. You ever done a plot plan and you want to scale this, but you don't 
the only way this tool down here works is if you have a dimension that's straight back and forth or up and down. You cannot go at an angle using this tool right here. It will not work. It won't even allow you to, to dimension at a, you know, to scale at an angle. This is tougher to remember, it, but it's, it's bottom line is the, the, the formula is what the number is divided by what you want it to be. And here's how you do that. Um, I just remembered this now. I had a little trouble with this one, but okay. So I'm going to go by this number here. I'm going to look for the longest number that I can find. But um, and what I'm going to do is make it bigger to start with. I'm going to get a little bit closer to the size that I want it. Okay, I, and then then I'm going to draw a line on top of this. All right. So I'm going to draw a CAD line. Let me open that CAD line. I'm going to make that CAD line red. I'm going to change the line weight to be really heavy so I can see it better. And I'm going to turn my line weights on. So now I can see that red line a lot better. And I'm going to take that line and put it right in the middle of that, that marker right there. And I think it's right in the middle of this marker right here. That's the marker for the neighbors, I believe. Um, all right. So I need this number. Okay. So let's turn on the dimension for that line. So show the length for that CAD line I drew. And here is the length of that CAD line. It's 124.41 decimal feet. Okay. I need it to be 81.26. So, so I actually made this drawing bigger than it should be instead of smaller than it should be. But that's fine. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the line in the image. And I'm going to open transform replicate. This is, you might have to come back and watch this video a couple times. All right. What I'm going to do is I need to, to con I need to get a scale factor. And actually the scale factor here is going to be smaller than one. If it if the numbers were opposite, where this said 81 and this said 124, then the scale factor would be like 1.5 or 1.2. But here's how you here's how you get to that. So I'm going to go um, 81, 81 point two six feet. I'm just going to type it in and Chief's going to convert that to inches. And then I'm going to go 241.41 decimal feet. All right, so I'm going to take what it is divided by what it should be. Right? Is that right? Yeah, that's right, John. No, it is okay. the other way. No, it's what what it what it should be divided by what it is. Right. So what it should be is is that. So I'm going to take I'm going to go down to resize. So you see, I'm using the dialog boxes right in chief to do this. I'm not using a calculator. So I'm going to take 975 divided by 2896. And I'm going to turn that off because I don't want to move the thing. I just use that to get those numbers. And there's my scale factor. So chief's going to scale at 0.3366. And when I click OK, and now when I go look at my my number here okay something didn't work did i because it did it too much it should be 81. You the wrong way. you're almost mm -hmm. done i think you divided the wrong way did you yeah i think so you, the, have to you want a bigger number right okay let's do it one more time so it's, it's what yeah. what you want it to be divided by what it is all right yeah. so 81.26 feet 41.89 decimal feet. So I need to 975. 975. You, so long as you have both of them in decimal feet, Dan, you can, you don't have to convert it either. Okay. I guess I'm so used to doing this. I don't even bother with that anymore. Yeah. Here we go. All right. So now we got it. So 81.3581. That's pretty darn close. And that's how you scale something to be the right size when it's not straight up and down. Okay. Anything else? We're good. I you made guys, a, uh, I made a spindle for my stairway. You want to see that? Okay. <laughs> Just use the uh, 3D molding polyline. Cool, huh? Oh, you didn't share your screen. Do it again. Okay, John, share your screen. Come on, I'm trying. <laughs> share, share screen.
share screen that one <coughs> you must not have there it is all right my fault it's a 3d okay. molding polyline you can make it any shape you want no that's true you could yeah you actually could draw your own spindles in using a molding polyline with a circle attached to it yep. um, and, anyway. and you'd have to add each spindle independently um but it could work um, Jonathan says, learned a while back how to import via transform, transfer my work, and now you've done it with point to point resize. Yeah, finally, Chief, finally, 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 Chief put in. I harped on them this for years, and finally, I caught Dermot's ear, uh, the head designer, and he put in, uh, he added this, or someone added this retain aspect ratio. We we're, used we're to have to do it. Screen, share your screen. Had, yeah, share my screen then, you stupid ass. Um, Sorry. No, 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 no. Start right <laughs> on yourself. <laughs> All right. So he had, they added this retain aspect ratio thing. So we don't have to use one dimension instead of going back and forth and up and down because that was a real pain to do that. Anyway, thanks for that comment. Appreciate it. Um, okay, but we got to go. Uh, we're about done here. We were done uh, 11 minutes ago. Thanks, everyone, for being here. We uh, certainly yeah. appreciate it. Please check out our kitchen. Uh, we were, you know, check out Chief Experts Academy and hit the store, and we've got all sorts of different courses there. Um, I've been get asked, I've been getting asked lately, what's a good way to start learning Chief? And um, I need to create a little video for this, but I always recommend creating a plan with Chief Architect. Take this course; it includes the templates that I work with, and it gives you a really good, you know, fast heads up on how to use Chief Architect. To, to its capacity. It's really a nice, uh, really nice way to get started with Chief. If you and don't if have you want... Dan's template yet, it's worth 10 times what you're going to pay for that class. Absolutely. Yeah. And then some. Absolutely. So, and, and, and in the kitchen course, we are in the next six weeks, we'll be creating a brand new kitchen template based on the feedback we get from everybody in the class. So um, that's going to be really awesome too. I'm really looking forward to doing that. So, all right, you guys, um, thank you for being here. We'll see everybody next time on the designer show or somewhere where we're online. So you guys have a great, great weekend. We'll see you later. Bye everyone.